nowadays, if you were to think of fighting and, and public fighting, right? What, what is the first thing, I don't know, what's the first thing that comes to mind for you guys? When, when I think of the public realm, when people think about competitive fighting, now the big craze is UFC, isn't it? UFC, if you don't know what that stands for, is the ultimate fighting championships. And that's, the, the, you know, whenever you see now fighting on Facebook where people post clips, it's usually clips from the UFC, you know, two, man, two men in a ring, and they've got little gloves on and they're just, there's no specific style at all. They're just two, men's, two men, no hold bars, and they just uh, fight, you know, one goes in, one comes out. Um, but a lot of people don't know that um, the UFC, the, the, the Ultimate Fighting Championships, actually started with a certain style called Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. How many of you guys knew that? No, oh, okay. So, no, 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 no fighting fans here. So, this will be new to you. I'll sound like an expert, even though I'm not. But the UFC started with, it, with one style of fighting, which was called Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. And Jiu-Jitsu is a type of wrestling. It started in Japan. That's why it sounds Japanese, Jiu-Jitsu. And what happened is uh, the Brazilians learnt it, a family by the name of Gracie, and then they took it to Brazil and it became what, was, what is now known as Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And the most famous type of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, named after the Gracie family. And it was that family that would, you know, would challenge people to fight and people would challenge them to show that their method of fighting was the most effective. And they ended up taking that to America where it became huge, where, you know, and then they, they had what was called the ultimate fighting championship where any technique could come and there was no rules and it was just whoever won that fight. But now, when you think about the UFC, it's not just one method anymore because when the UFC started, Gracie Jiu Jitsu was dominant. But now when you hear about what sort of fighting styles that they do, it's all about MMA. Have you guys heard of that? MMA. So MMA stands for Mixed Martial Arts because they started to realize that the most effective form of any sort of martial art was not to limit yourself to one method, but you had to learn all methods. You had to learn all the techniques and then they would, they would have a technique that isn't really just one technique. They would call it Mixed Martial Arts because you would have to learn everything and then that's what would make you effective. Why does that make you effective? Because number one, when you learn all different sorts of martial arts, you know, number one, how to defend against all the different types of martial arts, don't you? You know how they're going to attack. You know how the maneuvers that they're going to try and get you into, how they strike, how they kick. So not only do you know how to defend against it, you're also going to know how they defend. So it's very effective for somebody to be a mixed martial artist because they know if I attack this way, this is probably how they're going to defend and I know to come this way or submit this way or wrestle them this way. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because, you know, we're in a spiritual fight. And I think some people have the frame of mind where if they just have one method, that's the one cookie cutter method for everybody. But I think if we can learn a lesson just from physical fighting, people have started to realize one method isn't just going to cut it. One, and I'm going to clarify, but I mean, you know, the, but one method, you need, to, you need to learn different things. You need to have different ways to explain things, different, you know, know what, what other religions believe. You need to be not, not ignorant of all these things. Yes, everyone gets the same, saved the same way. So I'm not saying that there's a different method of being saved. Everyone has to believe on Jesus Christ. But how we have that conversation, how we address objections, how we explain things, how we approach a Muslim is going to be different to how we approach a Jehovah's Witness, how we approach a Pentecostal, somebody that's been in church, that's, that's familiar with the gospel. We're going to have a different type of conversation. And if we just limit ourselves to one martial art, we're not going to be as effective as we could, right? Because we want to be you know, spiritual uh, mixed martial artists. So, you know, if you, if you are more knowledgeable about different methods, different martial arts, and we just go back to physical fighting, you know, number one, you're going to know how to defend against it. Number two, you're going to know how to attack it. But number three, you're probably going to enjoy the fight more, aren't you? But not saying that we necessarily need to have fun out of it, but, you know, if you go into a fight not knowing anything at all, and you just get your butt whooped, I mean, that's, like, that's not going to be very enjoyable. I mean, even, if, 
you, you know, when people play competitive sports, even though you get, you know, you may get totally creamed and, and, and not even put up a fight. If you know you put in your best fight and, and you know, you know, I've been training for this and been preparing for this and, you know, I lost, but I put up a good fight, you wouldn't feel as bad as somebody that just goes in and just doesn't know what they're doing, totally ignorant and just, you know, just, just embarrassing. You know, and it, that's why when, when you watch a ball game and it's very close, you're like, oh, that was a really good game. But when they just get totally smashed, you're like, that wasn't even fun to watch. It was just embarrassing. So, you know, you're probably going to enjoy the fight more if you, you know, are a bit more knowledgeable about things and, and, and not so ignorant about other religions that are out there. And, and, and also, when you talk to the person at the door, you're not going to seem as ignorant, you know, because you do know a bit about it. Um, and, and that's why it's great when, uh, you know, I, I talk to somebody out door to door and they do believe something that's different. I want, I want to learn a bit about it, take that opportunity to say, you know, what, what does that teach? What does that believe? Because maybe I'll run into another person and I already know and I already have sort of formulated a, a, an approach to talk to that sort of person and the next time I come across it. So you know what, I encourage everybody here to, to not be ignorant of false doctrine, not be ignorant of false religion, you know, learn about these things. But I will say this, learn about all different false religion, but you should be most expert at the Bible. Because some people get a bit un imbalanced there, where they just start learning about false doctrine, start learning about false religion, and that's all they're focusing on, to the point where they don't even really know the Bible that well. You know, they think they know the Bible that w really well, but they don't. They just know a couple of verses here and there. They know the verses that they need to combat a false doctrine, but they don't know the whole Bible. Um, and we don't, not, we don't want to be imbalanced like that. So in Matthew 10, verse 16, we see Jesus say here, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So Christ is telling the, the 12 here in Matthew 10 that he wants them to be wise, wise as serpents. So what does that mean to me? I mean, a serpent, if you think that the embodiment of a serpent was Satan himself, you know, Satan, you know, a serpent is, is subtle, aren't they? So they're not over, 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 overly froward. So when we preach the gospel out there, we shouldn't just be in somebody's face and, and really forward. We should come across as subtle, you know, and, 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 and be subtle like, like a serpent and, and try and, you know, ease into the conversation, ease into certain things so that it's a bit easier for them to receive. Why is a serpent? So, you know, a serpent is very smart as well, isn't it? You know, Satan is very knowledgeable. He's very knowledgeable about what's false out there. He's also very knowledgeable about God's word. Because remember, he went to Jesus and he, he uh, quoted God's word. So that tells me we need to be knowledgeable about things. We need to understand God's word. We need to un know the Bible. We need to understand the nature of man. I mean, Satan, he knew the nature of man, didn't he? When he went to tempt Eve, he tempted Eve with the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. He was knowledgeable about how men were, how men reacted. And we want to be knowledgeable about that too but wise as serpents verse 16 and harmless as doves so the only difference is we are wise as a serpent not to harm people and to cause people to fall we want to be wise as serpents because we want to help people we want to be harmless we don't want to to hurt them that's the only difference now i wanted to show you a video i thought it had something to do with the sermon it's, it's a video from an interview from a place called The Dean Show. Now, you know, obviously I do not endorse The Dean Show. You know, he is simply just a, 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 an interviewer, but he is actually of the Muslim faith. So I think they use that as a platform to preach Islam. But the reason why I just wanted to show you this, because it was an interview with Hoist Gracie, who was, he's part of the Gracie family um, about the jiu-jitsu. So it gives you a bit of a background on where the UFC came from. But there's something he says at the end that I think is really interesting uh, that I wanted to tie into this sermon. So let's just, um, I'll just show you this video. Hopefully you find it interesting. Let's go, through some, let's go through some of these fights. People are seeing this big guy, I believe his name is Kimo. 
right? And again, we're talking to some people, many people don't know about Gracie's Jesus. They still think that, look, man, I, I, uh, uh, nobody's taking me to the ground. So now you're on the ground right here. And people are thinking, okay, you got this 250 plus pound guy, muscle, pure muscle. What are you, what are you about? Uh, above 180. You're 180. At that time, you're around same. 180. What's your dad? 20 now, years. Now, <laughs> we, we see your dad's there. He's telling you something. He's telling you something. You're, up, you're on your back. What are you thinking at this time? Well, what happened is, um, to prove the effectiveness of Grace Jiu Jitsu, we, back in Brazil, my father, my uncles, my cousins, my brothers start to challenge people to see which style is the best. And there's only one way to find out get in a cage, in a ring, and take all the rules, weight divisions, there's no time limit, no gloves, no rules. And we've been doing that in Brazil for many years. My brother Horan came to America and brought the same concept to American create the UFC. So, but the, in the beginning, 20 years, 21, now 21 years ago, it was an eight-man tournament. So you had to fight three fights in one night. And I defeat all my opponents, three fights, without breaking a sweat, just showing the technique of the, that my father created. Mm -hmm. So that, once America found out, because what happens in Brazil, people don't know. But once America found out, it spread out all over the world. All over the world. Then the second UFC, my brother Horton made the, the tournament. It was uh, a 16-man tournament, so it was four fights in one night. So you had to fight four fights in the same night with no time limit, no weight division, no rules. Everything goes mm -hmm. in a cage. Two men walk in, one walk out, and I beat four opponents in the same night. Now, right? Somebody has a 200, all the opponents, there's no weight, limit, no weight limit, no weight division. So I'm fighting guys, I'm 180, I'm fighting guys 250, 270, 280. Just their professional, their style, fighting that sumo wrestler against a kickboxer, against a, a wrestler, against a judo player, against a boxer. The best karate. of the best. So this is like the best in karate. The best, and athletes, I mean, not just, okay, a black belt karate, but they're at the top of their level, correct? They're at the top of the level. But then the, what, I mean, was, uh, what impressed the most, it was that I'm, this, I was the smallest person beating the guys who were not just bigger, but beating them without having to smash their face, submitting them with a the technique, with a choke, with an arm lock, and they would quit and, like, get out clean face without having to be smashed up and so it's not a violent <laughs> yeah. art, it's a self-defense art. As gentle as possible. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah. So 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 now Maybe with kindness. With kindness, that's right. That's so important, yes. And now you proved obviously this is uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Have you ever had somebody now today? I know there was in the Gracie Academy. There was a, tell us about the time. It was it open for anyone? It was a challenge, but anyone can come in. There's old footage people are seeing right now. That now this is in the academy. This is even before the UFC. It was a challenge. Like, how, how, how did you guys set that up? Before the UFC, there was a. I mean, there was always a student that trained karate or trained wrestling, and he would come in and it's like, man, my karate instructor. I told him about you guys, and he said he doesn't believe. So we said, well, bring him on, bring him over. We'll be glad to talk to him about it. So he'll bring the instructor over, and the instructor is like, well, I don't think he can take him to the ground. So we kind of, it's, it, wasn't, it wasn't exactly a fight, because we never beat them up. Yeah. We just take them down, we're more baptizing them, <laughs> turn them into, a, turn them into a, a believers. In Gracie Jiu Jitsu. In Gracie Jiu Jitsu. So we take them down, we're more looking like, okay, my brother will always say, man, don't beat this guy up too bad. He's going to be a future student. Mm. So we treat them as a future student. So the guy will come in and I'll take them down, not even a slap to the face, just control them and show it to them. Then they'll be like, oh man, I'm trying my best over here. And Royce is doing nothing, just controlling, taking me to the ground, taking me out of my game. It's embarrassing. Can I learn this? <laughs> <laughs> and again, with kindness and gentleness, this is amazing. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you found that interesting. So, it's, you know, that's why. It's interesting when you think about the fight that we're in, I think that this whole MMA, UFC, Jiu-Jitsu analogy really fits because it's interesting that they found that the most effective form of martial art at the time anyway was this whole wrestling submission technique 
And what made it so famous is because Hoist Gracie, which was the guy that got interviewed, in the very first two UFCs, he was the, uh, the representative of Gracie Jiu Jitsu. And they purposely put in somebody that was much smaller than the other opponents to prove its effectiveness. And I sort of feel like that's the same with God's word. You know, when you have the right technique, when you have the right methods, you don't have to be some big name, eloquent speaker. If you've got the truth, you're going to be the most effective. And it turns out that the most effective form of martial art was one that was so like graceful and so gentle. You know, like remember how he was saying, you know, we, he could end the fight and it wasn't all bloody and it wasn't that they had to be all smashed up like the other, you know, striking arts were. He would just submit them, basically get them to give up and then the fight would be over. But the last thing, I don't know if you caught that at the end there, and this is the sort of the point I want to springboard into. You know how they, they said people would come to their academy, right? They would welcome any challenges. And that's what I, I think we should have that frame of mind too. We welcome any challenge, anybody to challenge the Word of God um, because we believe the truth will stand. So people would come into their academy, right, and challenge them. And you notice what he said? He said, my brother would always tell me, always, don't beat this guy up too bad because one day he's going to be a future student. And I just thought that was interesting that people that fight in the physical realm still have this mentality, hey, you know, we're going to get challenged, but there's a right way to deal with that challenge because we don't want to create an enemy. We want to create a future student. We want that person to go away thinking what's different and then have, have that open communication and that kindness to be able to come back. So we want to think that way and say, hey, don't beat this guy up too bad in terms of spiritually because one day they may be a future disciple. 